my name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. Today is Sunday, December the 5th and as promised, I'm filming in a slightly different location. Uh, it is the festive season and some of my Christmas decorating is coming together. As usual, some of it is behind schedule, which I think should actually be the theme of my uh, Floss Tube channel. If this is your first time stopping by, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me. If you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back because you know what you're in for. Uh, this is a YouTube channel about cross stitch and the stitching that I'm working on. Um, but I will say, so here is my village. Again, uh, a little behind schedule. So the nativity set came out. Uh, the village is here. The village does not have its snow on it because I'm having some cord issues that I can't quite remember how exactly I do them for Christmas. So I have to figure that out before I get my snow on my village. But the next step is snow on my village. I will talk a little bit about the village at the very, very end of the video in case you're wondering um, what, what this village is. Um, but I will leave that to the end for so that the people who are not interested in the slightest don't have to listen to it. So lots to talk about. If you've clicked on the video, you know how long this is going to take. Um, I'm at the beginning of the video. I don't know how long this is going to take, but I'm feeling like this is going to be a fairly lengthy video. So settle in, get a beverage, take care of the necessities, haul out your stitching because you'll be able to get something accomplished if you watch this all in one go. So I'm going to do things out of order. A little a little bit just to cover some ground and in bits and pieces look what I have I have my chart for Ann Morrison which is a hands across the sea chart um, that is an exclusive chart that you can only get from traditional stitches and this is a partnership between traditional stitches and hands across the sea in celebration of Traditional Stitch's 20th anniversary of being in business. Uh, so this is, uh, yeah. So I have, I have my, I have my limited edition chart, uh, as I've done in previous videos, uh, where I've been talking about Ann Morrison. I will leave a link directly to the site on the Traditional Stitch's website where you can order this. They still have some, some charts, uh, not an unlimited amount. Um, they still have some. Um, if you are if you are looking to purchase this the only way to get it is through traditional stitches uh, i am going to point out so this is a stitch along um and rose heck is the stitch along leader um, the stitch along technically started yesterday on saturday december the 5th now if, if you've watched me before you know uh, i'm clearly not starting this not anytime soon i do have plans to stitch her just not anytime soon because uh, I've got a few other things I have to do um, but the group I have to say it's like they might as well have had a a, a, <laughs> a starting pistol with the lightning speed with which some people were off uh, I think Nicola had made a comment in the Facebook group which I will also link below um, that she was staying up until it was 1201 her time zone on December the 5th so she could start getting her stitches in so the other thing about this one is that uh, Nicola Parkman uh, herself is actually going to be stitching this sampler along with the group. Um, she, someone else uh, did the, sam the uh, sampler. So there's an antique, this is reproduction, somebody did the sample of this. Um, it wasn't Nicola herself and she's choosing to stitch along with us so I think that's great. Uh, this is a stitch along where Rose Heck has mapped out a path uh, so that you can accomplish all of this within a 12 month period. Um, so she's got a map again that's posted in the Facebook group. And I have to say, uh, so I have looked in the face in the Facebook group and there are people who are already done. So this, these top two bands here, so this, this zigzaggy one, and this strawberry one, that's sort of what you're supposed to theoretically to follow if you're working in the in the time frame of the stitch along. 
that's all you needed to get done for month one to be on track to have this completed in a year. And I have to say there are already there were already people in the Facebook group yesterday who had all of that started or finished. Like the whole anyway. <laughs> that's clearly not me. So if you're a slower stitcher, feel free to stitch along with me because I'm not even starting it for months yet. So, you know. Uh, there is an opportunity. So if you complete uh, Ann Morrison uh, by December the 5th, 2021, you can enter your name into a draw for a giveaway for an antique sampler from Nicola Parkman's own collection. Uh, again, more details on that in the Facebook group, as well as in Nicola's video she did when she first announced Anne Morrison. Uh, I will also say, if you're looking for Anne Morrison, a couple of things. One, just watch your spelling of Morrison. There is only one R. Uh, I've seen a lot of people sort of say, I can't find it, I can't find it. It's because they're spelling it with two R's. One R in Morrison is the key to finding the stuff. There is also a hashtag uh, which you can follow on Instagram or search on Facebook for, and it is hashtag Ann Morrison SAL all strung together. No spaces, dots, dashes, or anything. Um, so that is Ann Morrison. I have the chart in my hot little hand. I also have the limited edition ruler. So I got the sea glass one. Uh, it comes in two different colors. It comes in clear and it comes in sea glass. Again, this can all be found on the Ann Morrison page uh, on traditional stitches. So I have my ruler in my hot little hands too. There's my Ann Morrison. Very exciting. Um, yes, stitch at your own pace. Do not feel this is not a race. This is not a competition. Stitch at your own pace. And I'm, I'm going to lead the way in the really slow group because I'm not going to start it for quite a few months. Anyway, doesn't matter. There's my chart. And Morrison. All right, so that's technically part of Stash Quisition, but I'm starting off with that. All right, sorry, I, I, believe it or not, I have piles on this side and I have piles on this side. Hence, it's gonna be a doozy. Okay, what have I been stitching on this week? Uh, look, it's the angels. So, yes, I was working on, I have part of this angel on blah, 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 this angel over here to do. This is from the Marbeck uh, Nativity set. So what did I get accomplished on this one? You're gonna laugh. It looks like barely anything. So I got more of this outlining of the border, but if you were paying attention last week you would know that that was kind of the um, what I wanted to do. So I wasn't planning on having a huge amount of the angel accomplished for a couple of reasons. Uh, so that's that's as, that's as far as the angel has progressed. So not a ton. Um, but last week, if you were listening last week, you will know that last week was the week that I was going to have the conversation with the recipient of this gift to have a conversation. Here comes the bottom part back. Um, so I have not yet stitched Mary. Um, uh, so I did have that conversation with the recipient about color changes. And I'm only making very, very minor, very minor color changes to Mary. Probably to so minor that uh, I would say it is unlikely that you will be able to tell that clearly. Um, once it's completed exactly what was changed. So only a couple of really minor tweaks to what we're doing. So I'm gonna, well, we'll come back to what I'm gonna, what my plan is for this. So I have my answer for Mary, so I know what to do when I'm stitching her. So that looks like not a whole lot of stitching, doesn't it? Well, that's because 
I stitched on the camel. Okay, so this is the neck. So the funny thing when I took it over to the recipient and laid all the panels out on the ground, um, <laughs> there was someone there who my uh, the recipient had actually put it upside down and the other person in the household came over and said that's upside down who is not a stitcher at all so i thought it was pretty funny that he knew um, that it was the wrong way so that is the beginning of my camel that is the neck of the camel not quite a hundred percent there but close close to being complete for the neck which means there's a whole lot more camel to go and I was reading the instructions this week. I think I'm going to need some help from some other knowledgeable stitchers because I was reading, reading some of the instructions and went, I'm not sure I know how to do some of this. So it's going to turn into an event. So I'm switching my focus. I'm taking it off of the angels yet again. And I'm moving over to this and I'm going to see if I can't get the camel completed. I think we all have to admit, despite my lofty goals and my best of intentions, Marbeck is not going to be complete in 2020. It's going to have to carry over into 2021. That's just reality. I'm still going to push really hard to see, to get as much of it done as I can in 2020. I just don't think I'm going to be able to accomplish it all before we actually hit. So today is the 6th. That means I have uh, 25 days, so that's a lot of stitching, and I have a lot of decorating left to do. And it's anyway, never mind that. So, but that's the camel. So the camel is started. So the focus, the focus from from now for certainly for quite quite a bit, is I'm actually going to try to get the camel done because then we'll be back to it's only the center panel, but by then it will be only Mary and 1.3 angels. So that's my stitching this week. So there is progress as always. There's never as much progress as I want, wish, dream, hope, you know, whatever. But there is progress. And I will say, I uh, forgot this about Ann Morrison. There's also a video of Janice, the owner of Traditional Stitches, and Rose Heck, the Stitch Along leader. Um, they've got a video. I will put the link to that as well. And I was watching that video and went, man, if I stitched as fast as Rose, I could get this done by the end of the year. I wonder how Rose would feel taking over part of my... Okay, probably not, but... Anyway, dare to dream. Maybe I should just somehow magically be able to stitch as fast as Rose. So if you want to see a really fast stitcher, uh, watch that video because Rose is going like nobody's business. Um, but while I have the camel chart out, this is, uh, I've discovered because I've been working on all the other charts, this is the one that has the best picture of the five panels. So there we go. So I only have the camel left to finish. Mary, look at how small Mary looks in this whole thing. And this angel and a little bit here. Don't forget, stream, streams of Krynik and beading. So the downside is I'm not going to accomplish my goal. I'm not going to get it done in 2020. Uh, the silver lining is that um, if I follow the rules in the Stitch from Stash group, that means I'll have a couple of really big finishes very early <laughs> in 2021. So I can add to the pot of money that I'm allowed to spend in 2021. Okay, it, I should not be planning on all the ways that I can get around the stuff anyway. But technically it does count. I don't have, I, you don't have to spend it. So I don't have to spend it, but it might come in handy if I decide to change my mind on things. So downside, upside, upside, take your pick. All right, what else have we got going on here? Um, yes, sorry, juggling. So I'm gonna show some previous finishes. 
Uh, some of you will recognize these because they've been shown on this channel before, but I felt given the season, it was worth showing again. So these are four charts from uh, the Shepherd's Bush, and I don't actually remember the names of them, but I will put them in the names in the, in the notes below. Uh, and I will confess, the first three are ones that I personally did not stitch. These were part of the stitching inheritance that I got, and as you can tell, I have not finished anything. Yes, I'm... Well, it's technically finished. It's not fully finished. So that's chart number one. Chart number two. Chart number three. And chart number four. So this is the one that I did actually stitch all by my very self. <laughs> so there we go. And yes, there's my beauty shot so that we can have something, a screen capture. So those are my previous finishes, Tis the Season. Okay, let's do stashquisitions. All right, I warned you last week that it was Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and I told you that I was, you know, not exactly well behaved. Not everything has arrived. Um, I'm going to start with um, uh, some Etsy purchases. So this is from, this is from Rocking Horse. Again, I will put the links in the notes below. My favorite color is Christmas lights. I love that. Uh, don't be fooled by this. This is not a petite little chart. This is not an ornament size chart unless you like stitch on some, like over one on 40 count or something like that. It's a, this is a, this looks deceptively small. Um, it's a bigger chart than you think. So when, if you're contemplating it, uh, when you go to the, um, the description of the item on Etsy, it will give you the stitch count. So you'll be able to see, I want to say it's like 186 by 186. So not ornament size unless you really scale down. But I got it anyway, because, you know, it's true. All right, uh, this is from Stitch Rovia. So Caroline from Off the Grid Needle Arts stitched this for someone and she changed her colorway to green, which looked lovely. Um, but I am a big reader and I often read past my bedtime. And since they were having a sale, I got it. This is Let It Snow also from Stitch Rovia. Um, I love this. So this is stitched on navy fabric with only two colors of floss. I think it looks lovely. And one of these days when I stitch it and I finish it, and for those of you who've known me for a while now, just it's very nice that I can't hear the laughter from where I'm sitting. I know exactly where my house is going to go. Sometimes I accomplish my plans. Okay, so we all know I have a problem with houses. So this is from Cute Cute Designs by Maria, also on Etsy. This is her winter house. Now she's done houses for all four of the seasons. And this is from Cherry Hill Stitchery. It's all fun and games until Santa checks the naughty list. Thought it was funny anyway and again there were sales and I'm not good about you know ignoring a sale um, I also uh, picked up uh, this was on uh, I had actually ordered this through my LNS and sorry I forgot to take it out of its plastic so this is from Car Kathy Barrett designs Jack Cern now I know 
there's a lot of there's been a lot of Halloween patterns that have been popping up over the last little while so I've seemed to have gotten over my Halloween issue uh, sorry I'm just looking but I think the orange for the pumpkin on this is too bright so I picked up This is Weeks Dye Works Clockwork. So it's just going to tone it down. I'll have to do some toning down in the yellows, but this is the one that I was going to, because I don't have a lot of orange in my stash, so I was going to need some assistance doing that. So yes, so there's that. I also picked up... Um, I've lost, where's the other board? Okay, so I've picked up, this is Cinders from Gentle Arts. Now, this isn't going to come through. Oh, that's not bad. So it's actually a really good combination of colors, which you don't necessarily, this is not always how Cinders comes out, but I liked how this particular Cinders looked. And with Gentle Arts, get it when you can find it uh, my understanding is that uh, gentle arts is clo is shutting down over Christmas to give their staff a break which I heartily heartily support um, I think for all of those people who were shut down and their whole way of that they're producing things has had to change due, due to the current pandemic um, and like I say, we as a community have been ordering like crazy. So we've certainly been keeping the orders coming in. It's the getting everything accomplished and uh, manufactured and made for us. That's, you know, it's not necessarily the fast process. So I heartily support that they're giving themselves and their staff some time off for Christmas. That's all good. But, you know. I don't know how many stores will place orders while they're closed. No, anyway, there will come a point where maybe everything will catch up. Don't forget, as I said last week, picture this plus. Actually, it came up in a conversation I was having with someone where I said uh, they were talking about a pattern um, that they were planning on stitching in like, I don't know if it was Halloween related or Christmas related, but it was a a chart that called for a picture that um, that was stitched originally on picture this plus fabric and I went well if if that's if that's what your plans are for Halloween slash Christmas yeah you need to get your order in now so the real answer is if you want to have something stitched for Halloween of 2021 on picture this plus fabric that you do not currently have in your stash you actually need to get your order in now to hopefully have it in time so that you could stitch it and have it ready for certainly for Halloween maybe Christmas there's a little bit more wiggle room but for Halloween I'd be going oh put it in now anyway I'm okay because I have my plan for 2021 okay I also uh, picked up this is two skeins of blue suede which was a new um, blue that came out from Weeks Dye Works uh, at Nashville 2020 I've added that because I have a thing about blue because um, they had it and it was pretty so this is a Mill Hill treasure it's just a crystal snowflake which I'm sure I will find somewhere to use that I actually have plans in my head I also picked up so this is Mill Hill 777 uh, that's let's see if that's actually right. No, 40777. So these are bead packs. And again, I don't know that you're going to be able to see them that clearly. So it's a bead pack that has multiple colors in it. And the interesting thing is these two packs. So these are both 40777. But as you can tell, you don't necessarily get the same colors in your bead packs. So I actually have plans for how to use these. I act, when I actually saw them there, I'm like, ah, oh, 
I'm sure I've seen them before. I went, oh my goodness, what are you supposed to do with a random pack of multicolored beads? Well, I now have a plan for how, how these need to be used. Stay tuned. Not anytime soon that it's coming out, but like I actually do have plans for it. In addition, a uh, couple more um, Weeks Dye Works. Um, as I've said, I have a I have a 2021 stitching plan, and I'm working through um, what I need so that I theoretically have it already or have ordered it. Um, and I was talking with uh, one of my LNS that has a couple of my orders. Uh, one all the way back from September, which is <laughs> picture this plus fabric. So those may not actually arrive before 2021. So um, as I've said, I am planning on buying myself a gift certificate to cover the purchases that I have on order that have not yet been received due to the current environment that we're operating in. So that by the when I hit 2021, I will have prepaid for those things that I've ordered in 2020 so that uh, it won't be a 20 it, they're they're actually not 2021 purchases they've been ordered in 2020 they just haven't necessarily and again you know when you order in September sometimes you know by December 31st your order has not yet arrived for reasons that I totally understand and I have no issues with that because I don't need it for January 1st so I'm very patient and that's all very good but I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to prepay for it so a few more weeks dye works that I need. These are for, you're gonna laugh, these I need for my December 2021 stitching plan. Now, if you've been watching this and you said you failed miserably at your Marbeck plan and whatever, it's always good to have a plan. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm good at executing everything on a timely basis on the plan, but I have a plan. And the last thing that I got was, these are the last few anchor threads. Uh, I think when we were talking about the Sweet PA, um, go back a few videos when I was talking about anchor floss. Um, so these are the last few anchor flosses that I need for that Sweet Pea Pastels chart. So I got those. Okay. Let's talk free charts. So um, if you watched, uh, hopefully if you took my advice, uh, both on last week's video, as well as I think on a couple of the previous videos about uh, signing up for the newsletters for designers that you enjoy, Hands-on design uh, via its newsletter only has, uh, she's designed this free chart as a Christmas gift to her newsletter subscribers. I love it. Is it going to be stitched anytime soon? No, but it came as a gift. I have downloaded it. It is safely uh, saved onto my computer. Note to self it's coming up year-end time to back up my computer so I don't lose my files but I thought that was lovely that's not my featured free chart this week my featured free chart this week comes from a designer called pine needles now not I can't say some of you may not have heard of this designer so I put a little collage together so these are not free charts but I put a collage together of some of the things that they do so these are examples. They've got monthly, um, I think these are called snapshots. Uh, so this is the December one. This is the January one. They do have ones for all of the months. Um, they do a lot of typography type charts as well. Uh, so this is their Christmas one. This is their winter one, but they have lots of choices. But that's sort of that's sort of what pine needles, the style of pine needles. And currently, pine needles is doing a stitch along. It's free. Um, about the free charts, just want to make a, it came up in a couple of things, both for the hands on design as well as the pine needles one. 
Um, just because it is a free chart does not mean it is a copyright free chart. It still is copyrighted and it has all of the restrictions that come with copyrighted materials. Um, the Pine Needles one is a gift from Pine Needles to us. It is only available for free during the month of December. And after December, very similar to how Long Dog Sampler was with Pandemic, after December it's going to turn into a chart that you will need to purchase. Um, so if you like it at all in any way, shape, or form, I encourage you to download it while it's free. Um, so this one is, she's doing um, one little block a day, and there will be 25 of them. So this border is done with white, and I believe the, the inner blue border is 775. So you get the border around all of it, so five rows of five rows of five blocks. She has also provided um, a version of this border, not that it would necessarily be terribly hard to do on your own, but she has provided a border so that if you wanted to do these as individual ornaments and just have a border around each of them, that chart has also been provided. And these blocks are coming out one a day. Uh, so first, second, third, fourth, fifth. The sixth has come out, but there wasn't a picture on the site. But day six is a shepherd. And she does have a note on there saying that um, these are better on smaller counts. So, you know, you're 20, you're 32, because if you make them bigger, they will tend to look fairly pixelated. And I can't remember, I think on 28... 28 count or 32 count, this turns into like a five and a half by five and a half square for the entire design. So when you get up close, it looks very pixelated. When you pull it back a little, it looks just fine. So each one of these squares is only uh, 15 by 15 and they're certainly not full coverage. And if I were actually doing a stitch along properly and stitching along with everybody a day at a time, even I think I could probably get these blocks accomplished one a day. So if you were looking for ideas for like um, Jolly July or Christmas in July or whatever, you know, mania, if you're looking for something that you think you wanted to do something where you started something multiple days but wasn't didn't become something that was overwhelming, I think this is a great option, um, you know, to do because, you know, you could, there's 25, there's 25 of these, these small little charts. And I think those are entirely achievable in a day for most people. So that is my featured free chart. So Pine Needles, again, the link to uh, the free chart is going to be in the notes below. And with that, if you only came for that and you don't really care about my, my conversation topic, thank you for stopping by. Uh, feel free to come back and spend some time with me. And as always, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the notes uh, in the comment section below the video as well. And with that, let's talk about collector programs. Miss Kitty, if you're watching, turn away. You, you won't enjoy this topic. <laughs> She knows why it's a private little joke between her and I, but she's a regular watcher and I know what she's doing right now. So let's talk collector programs. So a couple of weeks ago, we talked about boxes. So collector programs is a way for you to um, build your stash at uh, a reasonable pace and a that is not a huge drain on uh, your finances. It's very responsible as long as you don't try to choose all of them. Uh, so if you, you know, it's also a way for you to um, build your stash, particularly if you do not have a local needlework shop and you're ordering online. Um, so the way most of these um, programs run is that you get one package a month. Cautionary note. Before you sign up for a collector program, you need to make sure you understand what the rules around the collector program are. So you need to know if there's some of them. If you sign up, you are on the hook for 12 months period. 
Some of them, if you sign up, you only need to stay in the collector program for three months and then you can cancel or continue. Um, so you need to read, um, if you're looking at collector programs and they vary by store, they vary by type, you need to know what you're signing up for. Um, you know, there are ones for fabric. I will say right now, a lot of the ones that I know for fabric um, have limits as to how many people can participate in their collector program. And right now that is truer than ever, just because, you know, um, it's harder to get fabric these days. Uh, it's harder to get fabric. In some cases, the dyers are having a hard time getting the dyes uh, that they use for their product. So um, don't be surprised if you uh, if you're looking for a fabric collector program. The lot of them say that they're already full. Um, some of them will maintain a wait list, um, which means, but you're going to be on that list until someone has gone through the entire the entire collection before they usually drop off. Um, so you need to be prepared to wait. Um, but you don't have to do, you know, again, you don't have to do fabrics. There are a lot of thread uh, collector programs. And it can be even as simple as um, you could sign up, you know, I got a couple of comments over the last couple of weeks on my Anchor Floss one saying, great, thanks a lot. Uh, now I have to go, you know, get all of the Anchor. I, yeah, I have all of my DMC. Now I have to go get all of the Anchor thanks to you. You're welcome. Uh, and I too have been going like, I might actually need to get a lot of anchor because I might need to start paying attention to those colors. And so, you know, instead of trying to go like, I have to get all of them now or trying or trying to remember which ones you bought or didn't buy, a collector program is a way that um, the generally the store will track it for you what they've sent you and they will track what they've already sent you until you get a, a complete collection. Uh, so you could do it. So I know of collector programs for DMC, for Anchor, for Soi d'Alger, for Soi 103, for Krynik, for all of the Rainbow Gallery products. So whether it's Rainbow Gallery uh, Treasure ba Braid, Petite Treasure Braid, Splendor, Silk Lame, like all of the Rainbow Gallery ones, um, like DMC Pearl Cottons, uh, Weeks Dye Works, Weeks Dye Works Pearl Cottons, Gentle Arts, that could be a little harder to get into, Classic Color Works. Um, so there's a plethora of them. So one, uh, I would recommend that you establish what your budget is. So what's the dollar value that you are comfortable signing up for every month? Um, and then looking at your, um, what you have and sort of determining sort of what's the best use of your money. So I will say this is a topic because I have been thinking about joining a collector program probably at least every other week since about September. Now, I will say right now I have, I have no business signing up for a collector program. I really shouldn't. And I have decided, so... Uh, now, again, I really do need to go into the Facebook group Stitch from Stash and see what the real rules are. I think your collector programs don't necessarily count. But I have decided for me personally, for my 2021, I am not going to sign up for a collector program. Isn't that good of me? Stitching from Stash. It's only because I've been ordering all the things for my entire 2021 plan. So I shouldn't have to. Anyway, never mind that. Um, but I will say... I do have my eye on a collector program for 2022. I do have, yes, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about, anyway, it will give me a full, you know, 10 and a half months to make a decision. Um, but I could start a 20, a collector program in 2022. Maybe, maybe. We'll see how 2021 goes. I don't know that I need a collector program. I really shouldn't be doing a collector program, but I do have my eye on one. Uh, I will put a link to uh, the collector program page that my LNS has. 
they offer a lot of selection, a lot of selection. Um, so again, depending on uh, the store that you're looking at and what their particular offerings are and the way every program runs is unique to the store that is offering it. So just uh, have a look at uh, the particular program that you're looking at and what their rules and restrictions are. Um, but I will say, you know, I certainly know of um, a friend of mine, she signed up for uh, a version of a collector program many, many years ago. I'm all not good with the mystery concept of, of the particular version that she signed up for. So I didn't sign up for it, but I loved watching what she got because then I got to sort of go, ooh, I don't know about that little treat and I haven't seen that before. And okay, great, thanks for sharing. So now I, you know, whether it was a tool or a type of fiber or whatever, she got her package and then, you know, I got to see what the things were in the package and then I got to go like, huh, okay, so I like that and that. And then, you know, maybe the next month I didn't like, you know, what happened to be in that particular package. So I didn't have to go get it. And the next month it could be everything that came in her package was something I wanted. Um, so again, uh, it's just, it's a way for you to, you know, you could also do things where you could set a budget for yourself and place an order every month for certain things up to the dollar value that you set. If the collector program, you know, you could do, well, now I'm making it really complicated. You could do your own version where you're ordering, where it's like, here's one month of gentle arts, one month of weeks dye works, one month of classic color works, but cautionary note, don't forget in the current times, not everybody's gonna necessarily have uh, the inventory or the ability to get that on a overly timely frame, uh, good time frame. So depends. Um, for me, I would say that the collector programs are great for signing it where you're going like, I'm trying to round out a collection, you know? So if you're someone who's coming back to stitching after having had a, a long absence and have either gave your stuff away or have very little and, you know, and you want to build your stash, I think a collector program is a really great way to slowly and reasonably build your stash up. And I think, you know, during the current environment that we've all been living through in 2020, um, I still think we're gonna be feeling some of the effects of this in 2021. I am not a good prognosticator as to, you know, when life is gonna go back to normal. Um, but like I say, you know, I have been planning my 2021 stitching plan and have been placing my orders for the items so that I can go theoretically starting January. I will have everything uh, already in the house or has been pre-ordered to accomplish my entire plan. And I'm actually feeling pretty good about that. And I'm really looking forward to my projects. Um, I did spend some quality time with my plan last night trying to make sure that I've got all of the things and uh, might have a couple of things left to get, but I think we're awfully close. And like I say, um, anything that is complicated has been ordered. And so that's a really good feeling too. Uh, so Denise, who commented on last week's video that she too uh, has come, she's a multi craftual person. I'm a multi hobby person, not necessarily all crafting, um, but, uh, Denise is a multi craftual person. And so she has come up with her 2021 plan for all of her crafts and says that she's, uh, she's ready to go. And, uh, she's participating in a, a group on Ravelry, uh, about, uh, having planned into 2021. I think that's great. And I will, I do have a couple of other friends who've been commenting that, uh, watching me, uh, do my thing as well as talking about it has they've been sort of going like hmm, I should come up with a plan I should be working on that so and with that uh, that is the end of this week's video um, because of the light I can't really tell it looks like it's not too horrible so we're actually not doing too bad for time um, so I hope everybody is staying safe I hope you're staying well I hope you had some fun on Black Friday Cyber Monday and I look forward to seeing you next week. And I hope you all have a really great week. See you then.